And now, for the moment of truth. We are going to count how many characters this single line of code contains in 3, 2, 1. Minecraft is becoming a huge game again. It's blowing up thanks to YouTubers like Dream and people wanting to connect with each other during this pandemic. Also during this pandemic, YouTubers like Tommy Init have seen huge surges of popularity thanks to Minecraft. Now, I'm a game dev channel, so you might be asking, what does that have to do with me? Well, today, I am going to recreate Minecraft. This has been done several times on YouTube though, so let's make this a bit more interesting. I will only be using one line of code. Now before we start, I'll just tell you that you're in for a hell of a ride. The entire length of the single line of code created in this video was characters. And you can see the code in its entirety scrolling in the background right now. Now, some sources say Minecraft was created in four and a half million lines of code, but according to some more credible sources, it's more around 150,000 lines of code. I recreated Minecraft in a fraction of that number of lines. Stick around to the end because you don't want to miss what I did. Now before we start talking about how I achieved this, let's start talking about why. A different YouTuber by the name of Daniel Lochner inspired me to do this challenge, but he chose an easier game to copy, namely Flappy Bird. Going for Minecraft is ambitious, but you know what we always say on this channel, make Minecraft not Flappy Bird or something, yeah, no, I've never said that. Okay, first things first, I needed a player, so I created a basic object, which some people call a bean, but as far as I know, it's just called a cylinder. Or is it? Beans, 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 beans. Now that I got my player object, I needed it to move, because Minecraft without any movement is, well, pretty boring. Yet, it still seems to be able to get more views than all of my videos combined. <laughs> Here's a little checklist of movement thingies to do, and first on the list is player walking. To make this, I created the one and only script allowed for this challenge. In the script, I started writing the one and only line of code allowed for this challenge. I created a reference to the rigid body of our player object, then I made it move by setting the x and z velocity of this rigid body to a certain value depending on if the arrow or WASD keys are pressed. Now that is a mouthful, but it is a lot simpler than it seems, it's just WASD movement. Also I have a confession to make, I lied. I started off this challenge by completely forgetting we were doing a one line challenge and I just started coding as normal. But after putting all of the code I just wrote on one line, the first item of the checklist was done. Then I moved on to the next item on the list, which is looking around. First of all, we need to make the camera object a child of the player object. For the horizontal camera rotation, we will rotate our player object. This will rotate both the player and the camera object. And for the vertical camera rotation, we will only move our camera, otherwise we will get this result. This is absolutely not it. <laughs> After all of that, the game looks something like this. Next up, I completely forgot about the last item on the list, which is jumping. And I left that out for a bit because, well, I'm a little bit dumb. The next task was breaking and placing blocks. What's on that checklist? Well, breaking and placing, I don't know what you expected. <laughs> breaking was pretty easy, I just sent out a raycast and whatever the raycast hit got deleted. I had some issues though, mainly with the direction of the raycast, but after a bit of bug fixing and an hour of my life wasted, I had it working. Placing blocks wasn't as simple though. Blocks in Minecraft get placed on the side that the player is aiming at, so to check which side of the block was clicked, I used something called a normal. A normal is pretty much the angle of the surface that a ray hits. This gives me a specific angle, but this angle is far from normal. <coughs> Ah, 
After a bit of trial and error though, I did find out how to use this abnormal angle, and block placing worked. Mostly. Also, I didn't forget about the jumping mechanic, and I implemented it somewhere in between the making of the block placement. I also decided to give the visuals a little upgrade, because right now... Yeah, not great. After a bit of messing around, it already looked a little better, but there was still a crucial part that was missing. Something that makes Minecraft... Minecraft? The textures. But I was dumb again, so I left that until the end. Now I needed a procedurally generated world. This was surprisingly a lot easier than I thought. I've never attempted procedural world generation, but by watching some videos by Sebastian Lage, I knew this kind of thing was possible using something called Perlin Noise. Now what is Perlin Noise? Brackies will explain exactly that. Perlin Noise, where values aren't totally random but have some relation to each other, which allows changes to occur gradually. We refer to these types of noise as pseudo-random. Perlin Noise is often used because it gives a more organic feel without being too computationally expensive. Using this newfound knowledge, I just made a grid of 50 by 50 blocks and set the height of each block according to this Perlin Noise function. That looks something like this in-game, but if you look closely you can see that there's a gap between some blocks. This is because we only generate the top blocks of the terrain. I added a little bit of code that would create the underground blocks too, and then the terrain generation was pretty much done. Now there is a slight problem, and that is that the game is now very laggy. This is because Unity, the engine I'm making my game with, renders every object that is in the view of the camera, even if they are completely obstructed by other objects and thus invisible. I had no idea how to change that because I've never had this issue before, so what I did is I made the bottom of the world a little higher, and this way it wouldn't render as many blocks at the same time. Also, remember when I said I was going to add textures? Well, I didn't forget about that. Here they are in full swing. Look at all of that beautiful copyright infringement. Please don't demonetize me. But now it's time for the big reveal. It is time I showed you how many characters this single line of code contains in 3, 2, 1. 1906 characters. This is a stupidly large amount of characters in a single line, but the end result is pretty much worth it, I think. Coding in one line of code isn't that hard, since it's just the exact same as coding normally. I just press space instead of enter when I need to go to a different line. It's not much of a coding skill challenge, it's more of a can you handle being this disorganized type of challenge and happily I'm very experienced at being disorganized. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video and yeah, like and subscribe, do the thingy, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye! Also, if you want to play this, there's a little link in the description for a download of this game. This page is password protected though, but you can access it by typing in the password DUCK. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye bye!